us giving order first item on the agenda and then the presentation is the color of uh, the dental palette, maybe JR or TC. JR TC. Forward. March. 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 Please then. Brothers. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If the ATL would stay here, we'd like to introduce yourselves to the cadets, introduce yourself, tell us what class you're in, as well as what your future plans after high school. Thank you. Today, Smith, 11th grade, U.S. Navy pilot. Good afternoon. My name is Haley Trong. I'm a junior, and after high school, I would like to go into pediatrics. Good afternoon. My name is Jose Luna. I'm a senior in Gainesville High School. I would like to join the United States Coast Guard after high school. Good afternoon. I'm Emmanuel Ruiz, and I'm and I'm a junior. I'm planning to join the U.S. Coast Guard after high school. Thank you, Joe. Tonight, Miss Iris Sutton. If you don't know Iris, you are not from Gainesville, you've not been around here a minute, and you've not had the pleasure of knowing the passion that she has. The one thing I know about Miss Sutton is she's all about kids. Everything we do takes it back to the kids. Um, whether she's supporting the teacher to teach other kids, she's supporting the principal to support the family, to support the children. Everything she does is about our kids, and it's very evident by our um, staff recognizes it. And we do a thing at the middle school called Your Difference Maker. And so I just want to highlight a few of the things that the staff said about Ms. Butts. These are words from your colleagues. She develops relationships, cares for staff, friends, and students. She's a passionate teacher. Her dignity and concern for students is a model we should all try to achieve. She's respectful of students and a fantastic role model. She's always professional. I'm going to pause on that because she shut the door with me a few times, but she's always professional. <laughs> Ms. Butts is organized. She's well put together. She cares for her students and is always willing to go the extra mile. She's a very caring teacher that loves children, seeks to help them with their academics. She extends herself beyond the school day to help students emotionally and academically. She's always willing to assist. Ms. Butts is very forthcoming and passionate about Gainesville is a successful place. She is a leader and loves what she does. I love that she is always seeking to improve herself and willing to take constructive strategies to become a better teacher and person. Ms. Iris Butts, our teacher of the year, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 
We have four retirees at the middle school, and um, I'm going to tell you that Miss Lividitis, Miss Carol Lividitis, dedicated 18 years to Gainesville Middle School, but she's in St. Simon and Ted Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Anita Hauser is um, gave 14 years of service to Gainesville Middle School in our cafeteria, and we thank her and ask for your thoughts and prayers for her. She's not feeling well tonight and is keeping her nerves home, so if you would just keep her in your thoughts and prayers. Um, Maddie Garvey is a counselor at Gainesville Middle School. She counseled for 42 years, with 13 of those being at Gainesville Middle School. And she's unable to be here, but last, but certainly not least, come on down to Stephen. <laughs> this is Kim Stephen, and she has 25 years, and she is hanging at her whistle. So that tells you that she was in the PE department. She started in Clayton County and finished her career here with us at Gainesville City. And I don't even know what you've been doing since you've been retired, but look, she just looks so much more relaxed now. Thank you. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is board commendations. Uh, just a quick thanks to everyone who worked hard and hosted yesterday's uh, nostalgia walk. It was quite good, a lot of fun, and a good crowd. So thank you if you helped uh, to put that together. Thank you. We have the city uh, are there any members of leadership all here? If so, you stand up, introduce yourself, tell us what organization you are. My name is Eric King, and I work for Rochester and Associates as a civil engineer. Oh, thank you. Any others? All right. A motion for the adoption of the agenda. So moved. Got a motion by Mr. Smith, second by Dr. Ramsey. All those in favor? Carries. Uh, Mr. Smith, come up back, back up and tell us uh, all the good things going on again. Good evening, board. Thank you so much for the opportunity to come here tonight. Um, share a little bit with you about Angel Middle School. Um, our, death, our thing this year is better together. And we like being together. So while the remote start was fine, we sure love the phase in the beginning that we had at the beginning of the year with our sixth grade for a few days and then pulling our seventh and eighth grade in. And I will tell you lots of praise for the long open house. Our teachers and staff really enjoyed being able to connect with our families and it's definitely paid off through the first quarter in our relationships with our families. This week we are moving into our second week of quarter two with the four parts going on tomorrow. So we anticipate more communication again tomorrow. Our faculty and staff has responded to the change and wow, there's been a lot of change this year. Um, the classrooms, the carts, the teachers are teaching on the carts for exploratory. Um, our media center has changed, our cafeteria has changed, but I can tell you, um, and also our step count has changed. Um, we, you'll see a lot of tissues if you come to the middle school because the staff is moving. They are up, they are going to the kids, and um, I do believe Dr. Simpson gets an average of seven days, seven miles a day. 
we do have a step challenge, but I'm just telling you. Um, we've had lots of change by virtual class adding in and an opportunity, a huge adjustment um, to those that are going virtual and those that are remaining face to face. All our textbooks went online this year. It has worked out that way um, amazingly for our students who are able to work from home and also our students that have to go home for a couple weeks. Um, our ELA math does have a physical book, so we don't lose that old school mentality that they need to write, and that does um, definitely make a difference. Our one-to-one -one Chromebook initiative, we did a survey this morning, and I think we're about 25 kids, so with the help of some good phone calls, we should have Chromebooks in all the hands of our face-to-face -face students. So um, the technology department is very supportive, and they cannot happen for our um, school. We definitely will have some more PD coming because with those one to one Chromebooks, it's changed the classroom. It's changed the look and this is do we charge those Chromebooks? So we tell them we have to get out paper and pencil. Those little things that you never thought of in years past for us because we were not one to one. So some adjustments coming, but the teachers again, flexibility is they couldn't bend anymore. They have done everything with a smile. Our media center. Um, Rebecca Oliver has taken up even our media center. We have a digital um, catalog now where the kids can download the books to their Chromebooks, but they also have the opportunity to check out books and she takes them to them, kind of reverse. So they fill it out online through the Google form and she delivers the books to them. So um, our investment in our learning focused school strategy, the time we had to make a plan is coming to fruition now. Um, the teachers have really buckled down working together with our common assessments and our common planning. And I'll tell you, this exploratory team, they all lost their classrooms and they went to a car, maybe just not that much bigger than this. Don't stop them. You should see their, their attitude. They pack those carts, they go to the classroom. And Jim Bradley even teaches construction from a classroom. So he takes his thing in and on the go. So, I mean, you can't stop them. Um, they are determined and they are out there. Our lunchroom staff, boy, those ladies just, they show up, they're so flexible, they went to grab and go, they're sharpened through lunch, we worked on it, we worked on it, and boy, those ladies can feed 1,500 kids in no time. They're amazing. Our teachers are cleaning and planning, they're doing whatever it takes. Our clubs are now virtual meeting, that's certainly different. Um, our bathroom breaks, we have red dots on the floor. We play Tetris. That wasn't an admin thing, that was a teacher thing. So when it's your turn to go to the bathroom, they got this moved down. The best team's at 10 o'clock, no offense, but she's still here. But the best team does it at 10 o'clock, and they do the best Tetris move to get everybody to the bathroom and incorporate a mass break. Who would have thought? But our students that showed up this year, well, they missed school. I don't care what they tell you, they missed school. Their behavior shows it, their manners show it, the four arms that they started in elementary school have carried over. Um, we don't have a rule that says you say yes ma'am and no ma'am, but it's there, it's present among our students. They are very respectful, responsible role models. I tell you, you just can't hardly miss a beat with them. Um, they embrace the mask. Who would have thought a year ago you could have told middle school students, put your mask on? That's it. Miss Sergeant works the buses in every morning and she gives out some every morning to kids that forgot them or kick out of the bus and maybe hit it from the bus driver because our bus drivers have been extremely flexible. But I tell you, um, there's a lot of things we could have told you that went wrong, but not with the staff. The teachers in the classroom are working hard, our support staff, and our coaches have ended us um, with some happy days lately. Our football team had a great win, our volleyball team, our cross-country team, our cheerleaders, great fall sports season for us, and we were not sure that was going to happen. We are here yet for our um, winter sports trials and even our musical. Our drama department is holding um, auditions and they have to submit them vocally, their vocal auditions. I will not submit it because she never picks me, but I don't take it personal to get your grade. But um, just a lot of amazing things happening for our students and our staff who, again, cannot be more flexible and working hard for our school. So thank you for your support and come any day. We'll say you about any uh, questions or comments from Mrs. Brown? Mr. Brown, I just say, as a father of a sixth grader, you know, sixth graders coming in is always a little scary for parents and not in middle school to big step up. Uh, but it's really been great, um, just in general, but especially in light of all the challenges with COVID and everything. So 
uh, or as a parent and as a board member, just thank you to the whole team for it, it really been a great experience so far. Great, it is definitely a team approach. So thank you, sir. And I enjoyed my table for one. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Smith comes to eat lunch with us uh, every couple of weeks. And he usually sits with the kids or sits at his adult table, sometimes at his adult table. And this year he had to have a table for one because their kids hurry in the classroom. But he's welcome anytime. And he got to see a few of the kids. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. I'd like to thank Dr. Simpson and Mrs. Sargent for working with Carlisle. I think Dr. Simpson works for one and that. I fumbled around on my phone and we did that out about Mrs. Sawyer, so I appreciate her patience. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, do we have a motion to approve the minutes, approve this minutes? I don't think we put that as part of the original adoption of the agenda. Motion a motion by Dr. Ramsey. A second. Second. A second by Mr. Norton Holmes. All those in favor? This is called motion to approve. Yes, yes. Right. thank you, uh, Mr. Schmidt. We have a second. Got a second. Got a second by Mr. Mitchell. All those in favor? Thank you, Mr. Gong. Uh, Reverend Nile, would you like to come tell us about the uh, new advanced study center and its the update on its construction? Sir, thank you. Yes, sir. We have, we have before you tonight an update on the uh, advanced studies building. Uh, this past week, we had our OAC meeting. The things that we covered this past week that stands out is that back on September 23rd, we had a ninth floor uh, for uh, about 33 truckloads of uh, concrete out that slab done. Uh, they started that evening about 7.30, finished up about 10.30 the following day. So we got it all down, we got it poured, uh, underground retention fund is in place, elevator pit's been done, and uh, structure still, you can see it's going up. Uh, they're working on second floor band as we speak. Uh, next week they should get all of the uh, second floor decking done and start on masonry wall. Then there's just a couple of photos uh, for you to look at. It's a pretty impressive site when you drive anywhere near the area, and not just the two story building, but the crane. Oh, I love the crane. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you, the night four was, was exciting to, to see and watch. I love the, the fencing that has to be yeah, over the red on it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Adrian, have there been any issues with uh, traffic? Not yet. So it's, it's going pretty good. They, they actually have guys when they have a lot of trucks coming in, especially long beds, they'll actually have guys out on rainy and there as the uh, city place starts to actually guide them in, back them in, stop traffic. And I believe we tried to time it up where it wasn't during the heavy traffic time about the beginning of the school. Mm -hmm. did, the, did the ground hold up from all the rain we got? Uh, we have Sipics going up in place, uh, uh, hay bales going in place as we get ready to do phase, phase two. Uh, perimeter fencing is going up this week as well. Again, some of the uh, uh, SIP screen put on, put on the fence as well. That, that's green and blue, we're mixing it up a little bit. Yeah, I think one of the wood screens is going to have images of the river and the buildings coming as well. So, uh, the next at least year, uh, when the cafeteria media is being constructed, it's going to be inconvenient, um, but I think the payoff in the long run is going to be worth it. Right. And, and again, with the uh, high school uh, leadership team, we're discussing uh, different things, canopies be put in different places as uh, a coverage for kids. Doing the inclement weather where they're waiting under the canopies for bus riding and pickups and that nature. So it's, it's a work in progress. We're working with the high school team to make sure that we can transition as smoothly as possible. Like we said, there'll be some inconveniences, but we're trying to do it. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
So our timeline is still roughly May or June for this building to be complete. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we'll be ready next school year, mm -hmm. which will then allow uh, the demolition of the current CTA building. I believe here in the next couple of weeks, we'll see demolition on the alumni gym and the X-ray shed and the wing of the CTA. Uh, and so a little over a year from now, I think 14 months from now, the cafeteria and media center will be complete. So this next this next calendar year plus is going to be extremely busy. So is our plan? I think we probably asked this question before, but is our plan knowing that the cafeteria and media center will be complete, that the students will go into that in January mm -hmm. when we get back to Christmas next year? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other questions? Thank you, Reverend. I appreciate it. Uh, next item, uh, Mrs. Collins. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I brought before you tonight as a line of information just that COVID 19 substitute um, incentive. And so we are uh, bringing for you um, just in last year, well, in August 2019, we did approve the increase of $15 per day for each substitute pay type. So currently, our pay structure is $85 if you're a non certified teach teaching substitute, $115 for a certified teacher, meaning you have a teaching certificate, and then $140 if you become a long-term certified teacher substitute, meaning you are in the same classroom for more than 19 days. And so that's our, our current case structure. So as an effort, um, now that we are in a kind of pandemic, to um, incentivize us to sell more in our classroom, we're proposing um, the following structure. If our subs sub five to nine days, then we get an extra $50. If they sub 10 to 14 days, they would get an extra $100. 15 to 19 days, $150. And 20 days or more in a month is $200. So we bring this before you as an item of information and would, if it's the result for its pleasure, would then bring it back to as an action item. This came out of a suggestion from Mr. Smith at the last work session. Uh, one thing we felt like we did not want to do was change the daily rate uh, because we went up $15 per day a little over a year ago. Uh, but while we're in COVID and knowing that we're 20 to 25% short on substitutes, uh, created incentive. Uh, so what we'd like to do tonight, as, as Ms. Collins mentioned, is kind of open up for any discussion of feedback and then bring forward again as an action item. Uh, and so that way any tweaks that we make, uh, we can be sure to insert those, including you know, how long is this uh, in place? Is this through the rest of the school year or indefinitely? Uh, those are some of the, the things that we've got to figure out. I have two questions, uh, Ms. Collin. Uh, first of all, on the certified subs, if, if you are a retiree, a retired teacher who retired with certification, yeah. then that stays with you without you having to do anything Right. Well, they um, they can opt to do if they want to do long term subbing, they have to do professional learning plans and all of that. If they just want to be a regular sub, not opt in for the nineteen or more days, that rate would be one hundred and fifteen dollars a day. So some of our subs meet with me and they can get professional learning plans, so their certificate does not expire. So if they um, if their certificate expires and they got a professional certificate, then um, it you know when they want to do long term subbing, one hundred forty dollars a day. If their certificate expires and they get a retired certificate, they cannot sub long term once they receive a retired certificate. So some people opt to do get the retired certificate and they're being paid at one fifteen. Others say, no, I don't want to do long term subbing. There's a professional learning plan or a goal that they complete with me um, in, the plat in the electronic platform, and then they're eligible to do the long term stuff. 
So as you can imagine, some have said, well, I don't like to disappoint teachers, so I'm going to take the retirement certificate where I can clearly say, I don't want to be long term studying. <laughs> Uh, I think the question is timing on the uh, the payroll window is uh, what you have. Yeah, this current payroll window uh, started on October the fifth. All right. We would, we would max um, retro if you all approve it. We bring it back before you maximize any retro that's off. Back off. Yes. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank with the board's pleasure to bring this forward as an action item, action item in a future meeting. I'm in favor of it. Okay. And what we'll do is we'll monitor over the next few months to see if it's impacted uh, the number of subs that we have or how many days uh, a month they are they are working. Uh, so we'll be glad to give you a periodic update on that as well. Thanks. Thanks for putting this together, Mr. Thompson. All right, the new business action items. Yeah, with the uh, meeting we had yesterday, or the nostalgia walk we had yesterday, uh, it's been strongly suggested uh, from a number of people that we move forward with transitioning the alumni gym name and using the portability clause and policy FDC uh, since that building, the current alumni gym, uh, is going to be demolished over the next few weeks uh, to transfer it to the uh, new gym, which is almost 20 years old. <laughs> I don't have a uh, big opinion on the alumni gym or just not. Um, I guess the one point I'll make is that, you know, in years past, since we built the new gym, we had two gyms. So the idea of having an alumni gym and a gym sort of makes sense to, to distinguish between the two. Now that we're going to just have one gym, I'm not 100% sure I understand why we're calling that the alumni gym and not just the gym. Um, but having said that, I don't think it's a huge deal either way. I guess the one question I would ask is, could we reserve the right down the road to actually name the gym after somebody? Um, to me, the alumni gym is not, doesn't carry a whole lot of emotional context one way or the other versus naming the gym after somebody who has contributed to you know, the legacy of the community. Um, obviously, that's not something we're going to do in the short term, but I would just want to make sure that if we do rename the new 20-year-old gym, um, the alumni gym, that it doesn't prevent us from adding a person to it at some point in the future. I think that's entirely up to the request that come before the board, uh, whether there's an entity down the road or a, a, like a signature gift down the road where it could be applied. I think it's definitely open for discussion with the board. Uh, we will, with the Student Activity Center, there will be a new gym in there. So in the next year and a half, two years, we will have a second gym. Um, and so there's just a lot going on right now. Um, but just to bring this forward. And we do have the right to name uh, the court the new old gym. <laughs> and, you know, rock around or whatever we want to do. So uh, that that is uh, within our rights. Uh, Mr. Smith, the motion to approve. You put the motion before us. Second. Got a second by Mr. Mitchell. Any other questions or items of discussion? Well, how long until we have the second gym and the activity to name the new old gym? It would be so construction on student activity, student activity center should begin January, February, and it would be ready that August of 2022. So just under two years. So can we maybe table this motion and discuss other options since we have two years? Well, we have the, the option before us. We've got a motion and a second. And uh, let me just point out how to make a new way. Okay. Diff, very different function, how that function from this to gym. Very different function. Right. If we change the name of the new gym to the old gym and the new gym to the new gym, yeah. new gym. <laughs> All right, we 
got a motion in the second. All those in favor? Motion carried. Um, motion approved, uh, Roman Aye. Right. Thank you, I'm sure it's gone. Thank you as well. We got a motion by Mr. Smith. We have a second. We got a second by Mr. Nordholz. All those in favor? Uh, Mrs. Pepper, would you like to talk to us about our new, I guess it's our construction account? First item I have is a new bank account for the 2020 bond construction fund. Uh, this will house some of the excess funds that we don't need immediately for construction. Also, uh, we'll be able to take advantage of a voice and higher interest rates with the fund. We'll be moving over um, some of those funds. Motion to approve. Got a motion by Mr. Smith. I hear a second. Okay. Second by Dr. Rainey. All those in favor? Mr. Gage. Uh, Mrs. Pepper. General Reinvestment mm -hmm. Fund for the overage on the another project. Okay. I'm happy to bring forward this evening the third and final reimbursement to the general fund from the East Los uh, Texas Heat. And if you will remember, this is the Almost two years ago, almost that day, um, this is to cover uh, the extensions for an item and uh, <coughs> final reimbursement in the amount of two million seven hundred ninety-four thousand eight hundred fifty dollars and sixty-four cents, and that brings the amount owed to the general fund to zero. So. Am I to describe this happened a year earlier than we were told? So what happened is when we did the resolution, uh, part of that was three-year plan. The first year we did two million. The second year, because we knew we were purchasing property for the new middle school, we didn't do a full two million, and so we only did a million back in February, I believe. So now that we're in the new fiscal year, uh, instead of waiting till February or March for the start date, we are doing about six months earlier. So this brings us to uh, cleaning out or zeroing out that account uh, for anything other than the digital note. Motion to approve. Got a motion by Mr. Smith. Have a second. Second. Second by Dr. Randy. All those in favor? Any opposed? This time, the one question that I have on the dimensions here is that there is an estimated balance about at the end of this year of about four million dollars. That. Fund. Yes, sir. Is, what is our expectation that that money will be used for? Part of that is architect's fees and other fees that are not part of the bond. Uh, what we're doing right now is we know that the bond money and advanced funding is going towards the advanced study center, uh, is going towards the cafeteria media center. We believe on Thursday, Mr. Niles, uh, we are doing the bid openings for the second middle school. Uh, so, really, that's going to dictate a lot of, of our overage. Uh, we do know that we're building on top of some rock, so it's going to be a higher cost than we anticipate. Uh, so we want to keep that $4 million kind of decide to help support these projects over the next two to three years. Okay. That's what we're going to schedule, like, no party. <laughs> you want to raise that? That's exactly all the time. All right. Mr. Petal, if you'll present the September financial statement. September uh, 2020 financial statement. Um, our revenues is at 3.392 million, which is pretty much our TV revenue and subsidy to receive um, which we're doing well. Uh, we did receive our, uh, excuse, me, excuse me, our TV, our property tax revenues yet. We are anticipating a um, good um, first year to see hopefully next week or the first week in November. This is only project tax savers. Um, so hopefully that will come in. Our expenditures are at 6.2 million for the month of September, which is 
uh, right on the market, like the other day, extended shares are at 19.4, which is around 25%. So that is uh, normal as well. That brings down the fund balance to 10 million in 70 days. So nothing um, out of the ordinary there. So we anticipated. And I keep in mind that amount as well. It'll just approve when we get it on squash back in. That's also going to be added this month, so we won't have any issues. Uh, we need uh, payroll or anything else this month. Do we? Yeah. No, but just by uh, comparison where we stood in the come balance this time last um, year. I think it was pretty much pretty much the same. Okay. okay, next our squash receipts for the month of September. Um, was a little out of the ordinary at one million one hundred fifty-three thousand three hundred three thirty-one. Uh, there is an explanation for that. Um, I have a notation there that 393-1-2028 was due to an audit that was conducted, and I did find out a little bit more information about that from the Department of Revenue. There was an audit that was conducted for the years of 2015 to 2019, where a number of businesses had been found uh, reporting incorrect uh, tax returns. These businesses were all using the same financial software. Um, the issues have been resolved and September was the month that the uh, state released the audited amount and was distributed by the counties and cities across the state. There were very few counties and cities that were not affected. Uh, the total additional revenue across the state was 240 million. Uh, we received the 319 million by that. But still, you know, considering that, we still had a high month. Yeah, we were still just right at 750 or higher for the last four months. That's great. And we do have a little, you know, we have a, a portion in our uh, collection each month that is an audit portion, but it's very small. So, Ms. Tesla, that 393000 is actually cash that we deposited yes. in our account. Yes. So that's part of four million we talked about having in the end of December. That, that's added to that. Uh, Mr. Stewart, to answer your question, this time a year ago, we were 25.6%. Excuse me. Yeah, 25.7%. We're 25.6% October over a year ago. Any other questions? Mrs. Bethel? Motion to approve the financials. Motion by Mr. Schmidt. Uh, second. Second. Second by Mr. Mitchell. All in favor? All right, well, that's thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bethel. All right, any discussion items? Hearing none, uh, a motion for a recess. Motion for a recess. Yeah, board will take about a five minute break here and get ready for the training. Uh, so, those of you in attendance, you're more than welcome to hang around if you want to. But we want to. And uh, the Zoom live feed and also transition in the next five minutes.